May I have your attention, please? And good morning, and thank you for joining us today. And this is a session about information for patients. And I am Hiromi Todoroki, the chair of Kibono Kai, and the chairperson for this session. Uh, it's, honor, it's a great honor to meet you. Thank you. And I have the uh, honor of being co-chair for this session. Uh, this is, uh, and I'm here on behalf of the International Gastric Cancer Association, as we believe strongly in this event. And uh, I think the relationship between patients and physicians has perhaps been a, a little one-sided for many years. And uh, this is uh, to recognize that this truly is a partnership, and uh, this will something, be something to continue well into the future. So our first speaker, Professor Mitsuro Sasako, a friend and mentor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor to be the first speaker of this session. This is kind of historical session and this IGCC. I have no COI. And not only doctors, but patients also should know. Almost all medical information are based on the statistics. So results are not always the same after the same treatment for the same stage because there is some disparity of patient background, disparity of treatment givers, and its quality. And we should know the reliability and certainty of the information. And information from guideline or textbook may be different from the results of a particular hospital or a doctor. So, meaning of 0% can vary very much depending on the sample size. If you see, this slide shows the probability of lymph node metastasis from early gastric cancer, T1 tumor. And one group, zero patient had nodal metastasis out of 900. But this group, Zero patient had nodal metastasis out of nearly 150 patients. But the probability, uncertainty of solidity of the pro uh, percentage very much different because the 95% confidence interval shows that upper limit are very different. In this case, 0.4%, this was 2.5%. So for not to say I did not suppose this condition, the patient who are going to undergo surgery should know the change they will experience after surgery. Stomach is one of organs without which we can survive because fundamentally all other digestive organs, mainly small intestine, complement its function. But in any case, we should know that some kind of hindrance are inevitable regarding for digestive function and eating habit. Point of care in eating habit depends on the type of gastric may. This slide shows uh, uh, ESD, endoscopic submucosal dissection. We can take out small tumor, uh, T1 tumor, like this way. And then if the pathological examination reveals that the tumor embedded into the submucosa layer, roughly speaking, the probability of nodal metastasis may be between 3 and 30%, large difference. So if the risk of residual lymph node metastasis is estimated around 15%, it's similar with that of Russian roulette. So majority of young people don't pull the trigger. But we should know that, unlike Russian roulette, lymph node metastasis will not kill the patient within a few years. Besides, operative mortality may increase as high as 15%, depends on patient comorbidity and treating surgeon's quality. So we should carefully choose 
the way to be treated. Maybe for all the patients, no surgery may result in better not only quality of life, but also survival time. So I usually uh, categorize the information into uh, three. At the beginning part is the diagnosis and how the symptoms are related to the, uh, the disease, diagnosis, and the stage and curability, so curable or non-curable, and aim on treatment, just to cure or to palliate. So information, when planning the treatment, the, we should give, doctors should give content of treatment to propose or other alternatives, and necessity of treatment and expected results, and risk of surgery in case of surgical treatment, morbidity and mortality, and the potential risk of adverse events, frequency, and measures to treat them. And the scale of treatment and long-term advice events, and alternative treatment, if any, hopefully in comparison with the proposed one. Possible change or modification by unexpected situations during the treatment session. For example, after laparotomy, we find some peritoneal metastasis or something like that and prognosis and quality of life when best supported care is selected. Because of, because of fear, some patients avoid treat uh, chemotherapy because it's palliation, but even in that situation, quality of life will be very much uh, damaged and they have a hard time, will have. So today, now from now on, I will talk about the uh, most insufficient information given to patients at the moment, and the function of stomach and the sequelae of gastrectomy. The function of stomach is simply, I can say that, smooth and quick acceptance of food from the esophagus. Preliminary digestion, stirring by gastric juice and making porridge-like substance, and pepsinogen makes protein to polypeptide, but not uh, amino acid. Uh. And a pylorus controls the discharge volume and speed from the organ to the duodenum, and it stimulates appetite by ghrelin secretion. And when you lose stomach, many functions will be uh, hindered or uh, damaged. The food discharge quickly to the duodenum to jejunum after most of cases. And the duodenum of the jejunum have to accept non porridge like material and overwork. That causes overwork for the duodenum and jejunum. And due to overwork, Uncontrolled discharge of the stomach. Stomach usually take four hours or five hours to completely become vacant, but after gastrectomy, maybe one hour. Or if you don't have stomach, then no hour. And all the foods come to the small intestines, including duodenum. It resulted in significant amount of undigested material going into the colon. So some kind of bacteria found of such material increase in the colon and produce large amount of gas such as methane gas, and carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. That's cause abdominal distension and frequent farts. And I will talk about the eating speed. There is a large difference between the esophagus and the jejunum because esophagus does not digest, nor absorb anything, but jejunum digests and absorbs, so very different function is given. The stomach is a large, big, and easily expandable bag which can accept a large amount of food rapidly and successively. 
The proximal remnant stomach can accept food smoothly until it's limited volume. Then it can accept as much as the volume of the discharged food. The distal remnant stomach with the preserved pylorus can decrease expandability and rather slow discharge speed, limit the volume, but can avoid dumping syndrome. Sooner or later, it allows to take almost normal amount of food by functional adaption. So, the how to eat depends on the type of gastrectomy. In case this or gastrectomy or pylorus preserving gastrectomy, the food go from the esophagus to the remnant stomach, so we can almost swallow smoothly. But in case of toro gastrectomy or proximal gastrectomy reconstructed by jejunum, jejunum interposition of dove tract, food go from the esophagus to the jejunum, which personalize slowly and with go and back movement. So once food get into the jejunum, may back, go back to the esophagus. So rapid and successive, successive swallowing is not easy in this case. And a proximal gastrectomy uh, reconstructed after esophageal gastroanastomosis, this food can go into the stomach smoothly, basically. So in case of esophageal jejunal reconstruction, we should eat small amount of food in each bite and take little time between bites. And most of patients master the feeling that uh, a sense of feeling good food passing through the anastomosis. And usually, after a couple of months, food starts to go into the jejunum or di uh, duodenum rapidly, even after dystogastrectomy and which causes several autonomic and hormonal responses. That's caused uh, dumping syndrome, palpitation, sweating, vertigo, dullness, athenia, depending on patients, and a rapid increase of blood sugar level, and a small intestines cannot cope with such large amount of non purge like material in short time. So uh, this is a hint to how to eat, take meal. The plan to have a meal for at least 30 minutes. Start with high volume, low calorie material such as vegetables. Chew a bit more times than usual, but not so much as getting bored. Carbohydrate, protein, and fat should be taken afterwards. Limit the amount of liquid, water, tea, soup during the meal, but take them after 30 minutes. Enjoy meals with relaxed feeling and dispel the pressure of quick recovery. Don't move around and stay at the table or on a sofa for a fire after meal. Take some snack and sweet or fruits around two hours after meal. So this slide shows the mechanism of dumping syndrome. The early dumping cause uh, happens within 30 minutes after the meal. That's called hypertension, vertigo, dullness, cold sweat, palpitation, diarrhea, and abdominal pain sometimes. And late dumping syndrome occurs two to three hours after the meal. Cold sweat is typical uh, syndrome, and dullness, fatigue, and sometimes headache, sleepiness, and the conscious loss. I had experienced one patient who made conscious loss. So the mechanism, after uh, total or dysregastrophy, food rapidly goes into the jejunum and duodenum, which induce rapid absorption of glucose and a steep increase of blood sugar, and much volume of insulin secretion occurs. And then two hours later, due to the effect of extreme amount of insulin, Blood sugar decreases, but at the moment, no more food comes into the small intestine, causing hypoglycemia. And many patients fear about body weight loss. 
It's a part of natural cause of recovery to lose weight after gastrectomy. There's some patient, but usually between 5 to 20 percent. And be fearless and don't get panic because it's a kind of natural cause. The organ and large volume of fat tissue around it were taken out, so its weight may be uh, two kilograms or something. And loss of muscle volume after surgery. Staying in a bed for two, three days, lose one, two kilograms easily. And appetite loss by decrease or loss of ghrelin, that stimulates the appetite, that's kind of hormone and impaired digestive ability at least for a while. Body less stops around half a year usually in majority of patients and start to increase after two, three years in some patients. But it happens in some patients and not always. And overeating and now recovery causes diarrhea, so that's the opposite effect for patients. So moderate exercise can be recommended, but heavy load to the skull should be avoided within six months after surgery. In case you lose more than 15% of body weight before surgery, it's recommendable to take some dietary supplement. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank, thank you very much, Maturo. What I would like to do is have the three speakers speak first, and then we can have the conversation after they're finished. Thank you.